So Celia Sharp, uh, today we're talking about Jack and Rosemary Schieber. And uh, we wanted to get a little feeling for how, how they interacted with uh, first the Social Justice Committee and then later on the Peace and Justice Committee. Uh, so when did you first meet Jack and Rosemary? I first met Jack and Rosemary in 1994 when I moved from Washington DC to Boxman. And uh, when you were working with them, what seemed to be one of their major focuses on the uh, Social Justice Committee when you first started? Well, I think just thinking about this memorial service brought those ideas back in my head. Uh, and I want to share those memories with, uh, with everybody because Jack and Rosemary Schieber were founders of the Boxman. And their grandparents immigrated from Germany. So they had that feeling of being an immigrant. And um, I think that's what made them their entire lives be concerned about social justice. Back in the, 18, in the 80s, they sponsored families to come to the United States through Boxman. And uh, one of the great memories was that Jack, even when he was 90 years old, 90 years, he was demonstrating in front of the, our uh, uh, our uh, fellowship for peace and justice. Rosemary was working very hard on welcoming the strangers. And she went to dinner almost a few weeks before she died yeah. to support this, this cause. So it, they were really champions for peace and justice. They were one of the best Unitarians that I ever met. Okay. Uh, we're talking a little bit about uh, immigration. I notice we have a uh, Jack and Rosemary Schieber Memorial Fund for uh, students. Talk a little yes. bit about that fund and what it's used for. Um, because um, uh, they belong to the peace and justice almost all the time since they created the, the, the committee. Uh, when they die, the peace and justice uh, considered that the best way to honor them was to uh, keep these memories of their involvement with immigrants. Back in the early 80s when they sponsor people from Dutch Indonesia, from Lebanon, and then from, from Germany. And in the later day, they help all the immigrants from Central America and Mexico and so many places where people need to get some sponsorship and help. They were uh, concerned that part of the peace and justice was to welcome the stranger. And that motivates the committee to help create a, a scholarship for people who has no documentation, students who have no documentation, but still that wants to pursue a higher education. So the scholarship, the Jack and Rosemary scholarship was created to, to help students who wants to go to Bass County Community College. And they are, they had to be admitted to the school first. And the college sent us the names of those students. And then we decide which ones we can support. And since uh, 2017, we have been a sponsor for students every year. We money raised for this scholarship fund. Okay, uh, so it sounds like Jack and Marie were really involved a lot with the immigration stuff at Buxmont. Uh, 
can you give me just a feel for how you felt about uh, Jack uh, uh, Rosemary's interaction, not only with the committee, but with Bucksmont in general? Oh my God, they, for us, the old timers, for us, Jack and Rosemary were the pillars of Bucksmont. They support the, 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 the fellowship since the beginning through the, um, difficult years in the 80s. And then during the several transitions of ministers, they were there. They were very, in some way, very uh, wealthy and they, they support with monetary funds. They were very dedicated to all the programs that the, the church involved into. Um, and especially, of course, in the peace and justice uh, issues. So they were not just concentrating on the immigration issue, they were concentrating on peace and justice. Like when um, um, we were creating a telephone bank to support the um, minimum wage right here in Bass County, they were there when uh, we were um, working for uh, voting rights, they were there. When they, we were supporting the teachers that were in the strikes, we were, he, they were there. Uh, when Boxman um, started helping uh, the children during the winter time with clothing, they were there. So it's, for me, these are the, champions for all of these different causes, wherever it was that they were ready to help. Okay, so uh, given that, uh, I think it's a great thing that we, have been, we are able to uh, remember Jack and Rosemary today on the, you know, right before Memorial Day. So Celia, thank you very much. And uh, we will, proceed and see what else we can find out about Joe, Joe, Jack and Rosemary. Thank you. Oh, my pleasure. And thank you very much. It has been an honor for me to just uh, think about them because when they passed, it was such a loss for the church. And it, we still cry when we remember them. Okay, thank you. Good morning. It was a significant life event when Jerry Johnson asked me to speak uh, to give honor to Jack and Rosemary Schieber. They were fantastic, immense uh, parts of our fellowship for so many, for decades. Uh, they joined apparently pretty early on after the, uh, the fellowship was established and uh, the thought occurred to me a lot of time could be saved in, in saying what they did uh, rather than to <laughs> mention everything. Uh, it, it can be rather simply summed up to say that Jack and Rosemary participated in just about everything the congregation did. <laughs> but more specifically, um, they um, were very, very active. Well, anything having to do with civil rights and social justice. That was, that was the main passion. So needless to say, they were uh, very frequent attenders to our peace and justice committee meetings. Uh, they also were, were um, um, they were involved in the early meetings of the Green Sanctuary Committee when we were starting to uh, try to work towards uh, Green Sanctuary status for Bucksmont UU. Uh, very, very active in building and grounds. And both Jack and Rosemary were um, frequent participants, and enthusiastic participants in work parties and in gardening events. They, they did a lot of work uh, maintaining, and establishing and working on the gardens outside of the, uh, the church. Uh, Jack in particular was uh, notable among us as being one of us who was immune to poison ivy. So 
who Jack did more than his fair share of pulling out that poisonous weed. Uh, he led canoeing trips. He led uh, the JB walks for many years, uh, which were uh, opportunities for people to get together and walk nature trails for exercise and enjoyment of the outdoors. He was a real, real outdoorsman. They, they just loved nature. Um, Jack um, uh, had a, uh, a large Buddhist component to his, his feelings and his personality. He uh, began and led meditation groups at the church. And he began the Buddhist practice of what we call first light. And that is an event where all around the world, groups get together for a Buddhist meditation uh, before the time of their local sunrise. So for several years now, we have gathered about an hour before sunrise on the 1st of January of each year. And we sit in the sanctuary and uh, we see uh, either a cloudy coming on with daylight or on clear days, we see the sunrise in the east coming up on the other side of the middle of Chamonix Creek. And it's a delightful experience that um, we, we've been very fortunate to share. Jack began it and led it. And I have every expectation we're going to be keeping that tradition going. It's a, it's a lovely experience and we're thankful to Jack for that. What I think was um, very impressive about Jack and Rosemary in their uh, in, in there being a, a frequent continual presence of, among us in, in, on Sunday mornings and all many, many other events, is that they, they had a calm, dignified presence. There was no glitz or glitter and no, <laughs> no show of ego, just a, a real bearing witness to what they believed in and what they by their own example, were encouraging us all to do on behalf of the uh, of, of a good future for all of humankind. And um, I tell my friends and associates every now and then, my thoughts and consciousness kind of come to a screeching halt with the realization that they're not here. And um, it just seems so wrong. The thoughts then quickly go to realizing that, hey, you know, now it's our job. The onus is upon us to do the heavy lifting and to do the work that we need in this world. And, um, and that's, that's really the best way we can honor Jack and Rosemary is to uh, try to carry on, just try to carry on as much as they did. One of the last things that Jack Sheber was encouraging us all to get involved with is something called the 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 citizens I'm going to say, excuse me the people's lobby it's a good set of plans to do action on the federal level to really help our nation and our world and especially in the line of combating global climate change so if you if you uh, go into people's usa.org you'll see the whole thing and uh, that's what we need to be doing. We need to get busy. And I, uh, I thank you, Jerry, for the opportunity to talk about Jack and Rosemary, to pay them a, a really heartfelt and well-earned tribute. And now, the thing is, <laughs> for the rest of us, let's get going.